Uh, we are joining us. We are in our third with Joe Paluzzi from Junta 42. He's our content uh, or social media expert, and he's still on in the midst of his, I believe it's a 22 city tour. And uh, I think he's doing some good things. I've heard his name mentioned from a couple other people that uh, were familiar with him. So you're dealing with a little, uh, little semi-famous uh, star in the industry. So everyone, uh, he's doing his uh, messages here, and uh, he's today he's going to be talking about content marketing toolbox and ten under the hood tactics that should uh, help you out greatly. Joe, I'll let you take it from here, and uh, we're all yours. David, thanks for. Uh... Thanks for the introduction. I appreciate it. I don't know about semi-famous, but, uh, you know, we, we got to do good works and we see what happens. So thanks again for having me, David. Uh, I appreciate uh, being on the the, uh, the webinar series that, that you guys are putting on. You're doing some really good stuff. So today I take a little bit of a different stance. Most in the, the previous two, we've talked a lot about uh, some strategy behind it. Uh, today is going to be really focused on some tactics, and specifically the tactics that, that we use as part of uh, our little media outfit within Junta 42 and the Content Marketing Institute. So I'd just be helpful uh, to some of the things we're doing, some of the secrets, uh, some of the tools that we're using, and all that good stuff that, that has helped us be uh, successful in our little niche of content marketing. So just a little bit about me. So if you're on Twitter, I don't know if you're active in Twitter, my handle is at Junta Joe. And uh, as David was saying, I, I do quite a few speeches about social media and content marketing. Uh, I believe in-person and in-person events will be over 50 this year uh, doing content marketing speeches, so quite a few uh, speeches and workshops. Uh, so I wrote a book called Get, Con get Content, Get Customers that uh, hopefully you all get a chance to read. talks about the changes in media and how brands are the new publishers, so publishers that are on the call. I think there's some opportunities that you can find in that book. Uh, Rit wrote that with my uh, co-author, Newt Barrett, available at Amazon or through McGraw-Hill. And uh, just a couple of the things that we're doing, Junta42 is a online matching site or a lead generation site for custom publishers. So if you offer custom uh, products and services, you might want to check that out to be one of our content experts on that site. And we also just launched the Content Marketing Institute as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But uh, basically anything about content marketing or social media, it's sort of our expertise areas uh, with the demands that we oversee. So what we're going to talk about over the next, let's say, you know, 35, 40 minutes or something like that, we're going to research. So we just finished some research that I want to talk about. And then I'm really going to talk about the 10 tactics that I personally have used and we've used as a company to, to grow our business and not any strategies. So uh, I know a lot of the uh, bright, shiny things are tactical. So we're going to talk a lot about tactics today and how you can have some fun with them and grow your business. We look at this as a content marketing plan or leveraging social media as part of our overall marketing strategy. Um, when you look at what's in the circle there, this is really the tactics that we're using. So I'm not really getting into why necessarily you're going to do something, whether you're focusing on getting new readers or getting advertisers or creating lasting relationships or how you're measuring that. What we're really focused on is what are those tactics that you're using here in the middle and, and how you're integrating those tactics in with your marketing. So that's really what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, a lot of research here, and what you're seeing in front of you is um, we just did a research study with marketing profs, uh, American Business Media, and the Business Marketing Association. And this, this study information actually will be coming out in uh, just a couple weeks. So if you want the full results, make sure you go to contentmarketinginstitute.com and sign up on the right side to get the updates, and then you'll make sure that we send you uh, the research. So that's contentmarketinginstitute.com. See that the, this is what um, your advertisers or brands in your markets, this is what they, the types of tactics they use for the most part to um, create and distribute their content. So if you look at now, 79%, so 8 out of 10 companies are using social media of some kind. 80% uh, are posting articles on other websites. 60% do their own events. 60% have e-newsletters and you have case studies. You know, 5% actually have their own blogs. And this is something I thought that was high. And then we've started to do these, as David was saying, these presentations around the country for Online Marketing Summit, and that really does hold true. There's literally 50% of the companies out there have company blogs, uh, which is pretty 
investing, and that's a, that's a huge growth rate over last year, which we saw about 28%. Uh, papers, webcasts, print magazines, videos. So this just give, just look at this for a second. If you look at this, this is all the stuff we're doing as publishers, which really blows me away, right? I mean, so the idea that brands are media companies today is alive and well. It's just that we monetize that content a little bit differently than they monetize it. They're, you know, br- the brands, your customers are trying to sell products and services around it. You're probably trying to sell either paid content or you're uh, selling sponsorship around those content products. So just something to keep in mind as we move forward with these other tactics that we're looking at. So, you know, what's the goal? And I just wanted to kind of share our goal with using social media and content marketing as part of our marketing plan. So uh, what we really try to do is we use content to, of course, drive organic search, and we'll talk about um, search engine optimization and organic search results. We really want to build real relationships with social media, which I think is just so overlooked. I mean, social media, the power of social media is creating real relationships. Even this morning, there were at least, 10 people that came up to me at the workshop that I'd already connected through social media with, either on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, and now we were able to meet in person, and they came right up to me. It felt like I knew them, and in a lot of those cases, we're actually, you know, they're readers on our site, and uh, some of them in some cases are sponsors, so this is some really outstanding stuff uh, if, we, if we work it right, so I'll share some of our secrets on that today. We want to be where the journalists and bloggers are because we want coverage as well. Uh, products and services that we have that are not media related and then we really want to be everywhere our customers are hanging out and I think from your standpoint you are the expert in your industry or your goal is to be the expert in your industry from a media standpoint and if you are the expert indeed we have to be where our customers are at on the web I mean that's it like and I'll show actually we'll talk about some of the tools today that we can make sure that you are indeed the expert so Here's on the underwriting thing as well. You know, when we talk about social media, if you've listened to the other two presentations I've, I've given, you've heard this before. But you know, the, the the core of a social media plan that works is really, really good content. Now, the good part about this is you have lots of really good content, but for the most part, we're just focusing on the reader audience for that. What we want to focus on is we need content for both sides: our advertisers or the people that are buying our services or our content. And then we need it also for the reader side, which in, the, in most cases is free if you're a controlled circulation. So content about community and listening, listening won't get us very far. So I'm going to talk about some of the things and processes we put, put in place so that we are actively listening to what's going on on the web, and then we can figure out what we're going to do with that information. So number one, so there's tactic number one. Well, I want you to think about this for your marketplace. If you are the leader in your market, in your media niche, probably have lots of content and material. You, you may even do books, and you may have all, tons of stuff targeted to your readers. That's great. So let's say that in our case, you know, it's content marketing. So I'll use that example, and then we'll use another one. So make sure we have two audiences. We have marketers and publishers. So let's say for your side, you have your readers, and let's say you have your, ad, your advertisers or your sponsors or whatever the case is. And let's say that you're in the accounting niche. So if you're in the accounting niche, we create all this really good content on best practices for accounting, but are we the experts in marketing information on accounting and marketing information? And that's where I want you to consider, boy, we should do a book or some kind of a massive content vehicle to that group of people, to our sponsors, to our marketers, so we can position ourselves as the experts in marketing. Because if we don't position ourselves as the experts in marketing, it's going to be harder for us to get those integrated marketing dollars as they continue to dissect and diverge all over the place into sponsorship dollars and PR and SEO and social media and every other place. And it's harder and harder to get those dollars and to figure out where they're going. So I would just say the, one of the, the biggest things that we've done is to create this book. It's the best business card around. And if you're trying to get involved in the conversation, putting that book on somebody's desk or sending it to them, it, or having them you know, uh, open their wallets up to send you sponsorship dollars, sending that book is probably the best thing you could do. So I would think about if you haven't done so, think about being being the expert from the marketing standpoint and writing that book. Blog, um, the, the blog is how many of you actually um, blog on a regular basis, but I can tell you the two things that have affected our business the most positively is the book and, number two, the blog. Uh, so the, the blog I've been writing, so I've written almost 500.
500 posts over the last three years. It's pretty well followed. Uh, we have a lot of readers. We have a lot of people that share content. I mean, even on this post on the front page, so there's 97 tweets. So 97 people actively shared that content with their follower base. So if the average uh, per 300 Twitter followers, that's you know 100 times 300, so whatever, 30,000 people were able to see that content that I don't have any access to. So it's also excellent for search engine optimization. I mean, you probably, if you do blogs to the readership standpoint, that's great. I'm wondering if you're doing blogs to your publisher side as well on best practices for marketing, how they can leverage social media, depending on what types of products and services that you offer yourself. So one, the second thing is the blog. Um, this is a TypePad blog. I'm a big fan of WordPress 3.0. They just came out with their new version. There's a lot of things that you can do with WordPress. You can also create multiple blogs from the same domain uh, through WordPress 3.0, so it's fantastic. So if you're looking to get into blogging, I would look into WordPress 3.0. It's probably the first tool that I would use because all your blogs are on the WordPress platform. So number three is curated content, and you can do this on the reader side or on the publisher side. Um, and we curate, so if, if you don't know what curated content is, it's, it's, a, it's been around for years. Most books are curated content. This is where you're taking multiple sources and creating um, helpful pieces of information. But in the online world, um, where most of our content, let's say, comes from Google, which is all automated, just saying that you're curating content means that you're bringing in, you're using multiple sources of information and putting some kind of a filter on it from a human standpoint to create um, important pieces of content. And you do that time as publishers, so there's not a big issue there. But we use that, and we created something called the Top 42 Content Marketing Blog. So what we did is we went out to the community, and we now have over 300 blogs, and most of these are submitted blogs. And we actually had a researcher that went through and we create a list. And every quarter we do a new list of the top 42 content marketing blogs. And some real fantastic things happen with this because what happens is that tons and tons of people link to this page. And they also put our badge on their other pages. So from a linking standpoint, getting traffic to our site, and also from a, you know, the most important thing in search engine optimization is getting credible people to link to you. So you can grow higher in the organic rankings, and that's exactly what we do. We that happens with us, and let's just look at some examples. So, so here's some of the people that are on the list, and one of them's uh, top rank online market blog. They're an online marketing agency. Are very well read. Uh, they have, um, you know, I think hundreds of thousands of people going to their website every month. Some really, really good stuff. And if you see on the right side, there's our little badge, down to 42 top blogs, and we get a link from that site that goes all the way back uh, to our page. And that's on every, every page of their blog they have that link. So um, just the amount of traffic that we get from that, and that and multiply that times many, many people. And the same thing happens over here, Valeria Maltoni, another very well-known blogger. She's on our list, and she has our other badge as well. So it's, from a link, link bait standpoint, it's fantastic. And then we just create a valuable tool that a lot of people um, go to to get information so that we filter that information for them, positioning ourselves as an expert. Number four, um, this is more on the listening, social media listening standpoint. And I don't know of a process in place, but I'll share some of our processes with you. So that what I'm calling this is more of like an air traffic control specialist. Is we set up a certain number of what we call listening posts. And a listening post would be like the one you're looking at now on the slide would be, this is TweetDeck. TweetDeck is a Twitter management tool. And we can set up different feeds so that when somebody um, mentions Junta42 or mentions content marketing as a term, somebody's watching that and we have to figure out what we're going to do. So if something comes in, we have to say, okay, do we go to that blog? Do we need to read that? Do we need to share that content? Do we need to comment on that? You know, do, oh, do you need to comment? No, I, um, I obviously do a lot of things, do a lot of speaking. I can't watch this all day long. So we have somebody in our office, and their job for the most part is to listen online and using these different tools. Now, if you're a big company, big publishing company, you might use an online reputation management system like a Scout Labs or a Radiant 6. You know, we're a small business, small company. Uh, we're going to pay that kind of money for that. We're going to use free tools, free tools like Twitter or Hootsuite that focus on, um, I'm sorry, um, TweetDeck or Hootsuite that focus on Twitter. 
There's also tools like Google Alerts where you can get updated alerts if somebody's talking about you or your keywords. So we got to make sure that first we figure out what tools we're going to use, like a TweetDeck or like a Google Alerts, and then second, we've got to figure out what are we going to do so that we can start creating relationships with these key bloggers, which is very important from when we started our media business. We did that right from the start, figuring out what, where our customers were hanging out and make sure that we were hanging out in the same places, commenting and sharing information from those sites. Here's Google example of what Google Alerts look like. If you're not, um, if you don't use Google Alerts, it's a completely free tool. Go to google.com slash alerts, and you can go in and you can type in at the top are the different keywords that we follow, including our own brand names, including my own name. And then on the bottom, it's just a sample of an email that you'd get for content marketing and all the people talking about it. You can either get alerts every week, every day, as it happens. So just a nice free tool that we use on a consistent basis. Also, by the way, for your advertisers, it's great for following advertisers because what you can do if, if your advertisers or your sponsors are doing something special and you can get updated so your key account people make sure that they are following um, your advertisers' brands as well. So content that's shareable in social media, and I want to give this is I'm going to spend some time on this one because this was very, very successful. Um, from a social media sharing standpoint, uh, we created a ebook called the Content Marketing Playbook. If you go to contentplaybook.com, you'll actually see everything we're talking about right now. You can go there now if you want, uh, and, and we can talk about it. So contentplaybook.com, and we created this site. Now I just want to go through some details about how we went through this. And by ungated, I mean that there's no subscription. This is completely free. Anybody can download it. They don't give us any information. And the reason why we did this, there's a strategy behind it, because we wanted it to be shared with the maximum amount of people. And, to, and if you're depending on how active you are in social media, and you need to realize that if you gate content, let's say a webinar is gated where they have to put in a name and a subscription piece or an e-newsletter or anything that you're asking for information, that's putting a gate in front of it. You're going to get less people sharing that, almost no people sharing that on social media through sites like Twitter or Facebook. But if you make it free and make it completely available, more people are willing to share it. So that was sort of our goal with this whole idea of the content playbook. This is an example of what one page of the content playbook look, looks like, and you can get at, at it for free. We just did an overview of what a white paper is. So we looked at 42 different content marketing tactics and social media tactics, by the way. So you go, here's what it is, and then we gave case studies. For one, and, the, and the reason why this works so well from a case study standpoint is the case studies in here were our customers who wanted to reach the other side of our audience, but we didn't charge them for this at all. We actually had an overall sponsor, Hanley Wood Publishing uh, Marketing was our overall sponsor, great, great sponsor, good company. Uh, but the people inside it were Hanley Wood was inside of it, but many of our other sponsors were inside of it as well. So what happened is, is that our sponsors or our, our customers, they spread it around as well because we featured their case studies. So they absolutely loved this as well. So just another tip on doing that. So we really integrated our, our customers. So really to position us as the content marketing experts, to have it be shared through social media, and we measured it through various things like client sign-ups, more speaking inquiries for us, mentions on Twitter, Facebook, press clippings, uh, blogs, um, downloads, engagement time, and inbound links. So that's the way that we were measuring this program. So the first thing we did was we're like, okay, well, this is a we're going to a lot of time and effort on this. We better make sure that it's right. And we actually called our customers on this um, and, and talked to them on the both sides and said, you know, really, what what kind of information would you really like to learn about from Jump 42? And what we found out was they were really looking for tangible examples, case studies. They're like, we love all the strategy, Joe, but please start giving us some case studies. So uh, that's exactly what we did, and that's exactly what the playbook is. It, it gives you more than uh, more than 50 different case studies. And then we figured out, okay, from that standpoint, now we've got the topic, which is playbook idea. You know, what's the content plan and mix? And we said, let's do a hybrid ebook, and I'll show you what that is in a second. So it's a PDF and HTML pages. Uh, we integrated with social media, Twitter and Facebook. I'll show you that in a second. We tapped into our bloggers, so we let them know. We've been forming these relationships for a long time through that air traffic control process I was talking about in the last point. So we want to make sure that we were um, tapping into those relationships now. I mean, we have a lot of uh, uh, 
I don't know. I don't want to say it's a favor, but we do a lot of sharing with our bloggers all the time. And when it when you share a lot on social media, and then it comes to a time where you want them to share something, most of the times they do. But you don't want to call in the, those uh, favors too often. So you definitely want to share more than you're you're using that um, advantage. And in very few periods of time, and this is one of those where we wanted to call it in. Uh, we did an online news release. I'll show you that. We leveraged the blog, an e-newsletter, and slide share. So I'll show you all, all that stuff that we did. So this is the home page of contentplaybook.com. On the left side, this is sort of the intro page. We decided to do it in PDF form and in HTML form. Uh, so it, on, so uh, the idea was we wanted to create at least new indexable pages on our site that people could get to. So we wanted one for white papers and one for ebooks. But we also, some people just wanted to download the PDF and print it out in some cases. And that's fine. If that's what they want to do, that's fantastic. On the right hand side, you'll see our navigation where on the top they can go to the table of contents. They could share the playbook with Twitter, Facebook, or bookmark it on Delicious. There's our sponsor, Hanley Wood, right there. Um, so they've been money uh, invested in this to, to help us get this off the ground. And then there's the PDF information. I keep showing you this. The table of contents looks like. So that's where you go to Chapter 1, and you can click on each one of these links, Chapter 1, 7, all the way to 42, and go to the exact one that you want more information on. So we did create individual information as well. And then here is the PDF with uh, Hanley Wood sponsoring it and the playbook idea. And then, of course, the promotion here in the blog. Uh, it's well followed, so we got some promotion there. We put SlideShare. Uh, I've talked about SlideShare a lot, a lot, but if you haven't been on this call, you might not be familiar with SlideShare, especially in B2B. SlideShare is a very important tool that you need to leverage. SlideShare is like the YouTube for PowerPoint, slideshare.net. And so basically what you do is if you have any kind of a presentation, uh, that you want to share for free, you go ahead and just upload this. You can upload the uh, audio as well. But you'll see that we had uh, almost 3,000 views, 23 favorites, two embeds, just from SlideShare itself. So that's two, you know, 2,800 people that you might not have been able to reach at all, but were able to find us and search for our information on, uh, on using SlideShare. By the way, <clears throat> and when you upload information to SlideShare, SlideShare is very good for um, search engine optimization. So if you have some issues getting on, focusing on your keywords that you're trying to uh, move, let's say get on first page and you can't get there through your blog or get you through your content site, you might want to try some uh, some tactics using SlideShare because uh, they often show up very high. And then there's the, the uh, SlideShare channel here. Um, just another presentation we did. I did the presentation with Christine Robertson of Brain Traffic on web content strategy, and I don't know if you can see that number, but it's almost 15,000 views, and we've we've actually gotten a number of pieces of business just from this putting this on SlideShare. So just something to think about. And here's release. Um, I don't know if you do news releases or not, but we use news releases not to get coverage, but we use it for search engine optimization. And uh, we've used PR Web and MarketWire. Right now we're using MarketWire. I just like uh, um, their thing, and uh, their tool seems to be the easiest for us to use, and, and we're getting good leverage out of the, the SEO part of it. So what we do is uh, we tag certain words to certain pages. So we've got a, content, a page that ranks well for content marketing, and then we um, tag content marketing as part of this release, and it goes back to that uh, specific page. And Google more really good links out there, credible sites, because Google and Yahoo and uh, many, many other sites pick up these releases with the, um, the links intact, which is really, really important. So if you're not doing news releases as part of any of your programs and a steady diet of news releases, do it. We've definitely seen increases in our keywords by doing this one strategy alone. And then, you know, if you type in content marketing playbook, we're all over the place. Uh, we're very well ranked for anything. If you type in content marketing for anything, we're well ranked, but specifically for playbook on this. And then you can see at the top, um, Center 42 launches the, the content marketing playbook, and then right underneath it, that comes from Earth Times, and people say, and that's specifically from our market wire distribution. I'll show you some results of this sort of ungated hybrid plan. We've actually got over $100,000 in content project marketing projects just in a week. 
uh, multiple speaking opportunities for me personally. Uh, built definitely built some lasting relationships through the entire process. Dozens of mentions, ten, over 10,000 downloads to date, and for we spent a lot of time on it. Out of pocket expenses were not that high because most of it we we did internally. We actually made money on the sponsorship, so really didn't. We actually it was a revenue generator as well, but I don't want to get into the revenue generation side because this was a marketing activity. But it was a marketing activity that absolutely paid for itself. Uh, but just an idea to give you an idea of how do you how do things spread in social media, and gated big content packages are one good one. But you got to make sure you integrate it through everything else you're doing. So I hope that helps you. And then we have gated content. And by the way, you should know that. Even in the playbook, we have gated content within our ungated content. So let me make sure that you understand what I'm saying. So within the playbook itself, we have many mentions to other pieces of content that people actually have to register for. Uh, like uh, me, and you're thinking about, boy, we really want more circulation. We want more um, email names. We want more RSS feeds to our blog, whatever the case is. That's still very, very important. I think the value of an email name is so important. Uh, for what, what we're going to do as a company. So we got to make sure that we do want people to sign up to our white papers as well. So this is just an example of making sure we have on a consistent basis compelling white papers as we go that people can sign up for. But the idea is we package the big gated content in with the ungated content that's spread. So we know that people aren't going to share around our white paper because it's gated, but they will share around our share our free big content and then uh, get the uh, white papers and ebooks that are signed up, uh, registration access or webinars for that, and package those along with it. Um, let's see, tied to the, um, oh, I guess the point of this whole slide is just to ensure that when you're doing these big tactics, we want to make sure we're focusing on the right keyword phrases and you understand the search terms that you're hitting for with any one of these content initiatives. Like we were really focused on content marketing case studies and content marketing tactics and content marketing playbook when we do these certain things. So just important, and we end up actually coming up very high. So we're our main keyword is content marketing, and when you do all these things in social media, it really helps your search engine optimization as well. So you know, here we're coming up three and four. I actually checked yesterday; we were number one for content marketing, and that's our main uh, keyword phrase. Version blogging is very important. Uh, part of gated content as well. When we do a blog that's, um, so in this case, seven reasons not to do content marketing, it's a free piece of content. 80% of the people that come to your blogs will never come back again. What we'd like to do is create some kind of behavior out of it. Uh, not all of them are going to sign up for our blogs. Most people are going to leave and never come back. So what can we do? Well, if we've got a relevant piece of gated content that we can link to our um, content, that's I think a really good way to do it, and we call that conversion blogging. So at the end of this free blog, you'll see, hey, if you need to start getting started with this strategy, download this white paper. So we get a lot of people downloading that white paper directly, and we get a lot of qualified names through that tactic. So all kinds of sharing, uh, sharing all over the place. Uh, most publishers, I was even talking with another publisher today, they're very hesitant to share content from other sources. They want to position themselves as the expert, and all the content has to come from them. I think those days are over. I think as publishers, we need to share lots of different content. We need to share our advertisers and our um, sponsors' content. We need to share our readers' content, anything that's relevant that positions us as the expert, because we want people to come to us. And I don't think we're arrogant enough anymore as publishers to say, uh, you know, we're the only ones in the industry that have this really good content. So we share the one thing we do is we created this content marketing community, which is a content aggregation site where we share all kinds of really good information about content marketing coming from our competitor sites or other sites or reader sites or anybody else's site. So um, you can, if you're into that, just put our Jump42 community into Google and you can go right to this page and you'll see kind of what we're doing. So we upload content directly to this. We do the abstracts. As you see down at the bottom, this is one from Nextbook Media that we shared. Just get people talking, and we do a little abstract, and then we upload that information, or our customers and prospects will upload that information as well. And if they have really good content, we go ahead, moderate that, approve it, might edit it, put it in the right category, and then upload it. We also share on Facebook, so all the content that goes through our community is also actively on our Facebook page. 
as well. Uh, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But if you have specific questions about Facebook, I just think just the idea that all this really good content targeted to our specific customer base is, uh, is shared on, on Facebook. And we try to format in different ways as well. We don't always want to put it on, you know, here's our latest link. We want to um, create um, a little bit of spontaneity, a little bit of humanness as part of this, that we're actually people behind it and it's not an automated system. Uh, when we share regarding Twitter, this is TweetDeck we're looking at, which is a Twitter management tool. Uh, tool. But when we share on Twitter, basically what we do is we want to call out credit to what we're sharing. In this case, there's a circle that says, what motivates consumers to disclose their email address? This is an article from BizReport. Well, we don't have to put the via at BizReport. We could share it, and they could click through, and it would either go to our aggregation site or it would go out. But, we, but BizReport would never know about it, and we want to create a relationship with BizReport. We want them to know we're sharing their content, so at some point they'll share our content. So we do this little via at BizReport. Some people call that retweeting. So if you look at the two underneath it with the RT, retweeting is just forwarding, a, forwarding somebody else's tweet. But um, I don't, I'm not a big fan of just using retweet because that's very automated. It took two seconds. You could have... Um, many different programs automatically do that. But I like the VIA because it shows that a human being actually took some time, put it in, and is giving credit to somebody else. So that's not automated. I want them to know that it is not automated RSS, that a human being is actually doing that. And then the point is, is that we let, then they see that. And the more you share somebody's content, believe me, they know it, especially if it's an influential person. They know you're sharing their content, and that usually comes back to you. And that's what we sort on our, our, if I was to say what's Junta 42's Twitter strategy, if there is such a thing as a Twitter strategy, um, we really just share great information from everywhere we can find, and we want to let people know and give credit to those people that share that information. So here it is back on the Twitter site, that same article that we're talking about uh, here on, uh, on the Junta 42 Twitter page. So again, we, we told you I like to get human. And we do little contests like um, the person that runs our um, Twitter account. She'll do, you know, anybody who can guess what Joe's favorite color is, knows what Joe's favorite color is. In um, first five people will get a free signed copy of his book or a free orange shirt or something like that. So we do those little contests all the time. And uh, it's amazing that most people do know that my favorite color is orange. But it's just something different so that we're not just all business and there's a, there's some human beings behind what we're trying to do, which is one of the most important things in Twitter. We want to make sure that they know that there's actually a human being behind all this. One, this is sort of what we go by where we're sharing ten pieces of content versus one piece of other people's content versus one piece of our own content. So why don't you take a look at your own um, – Twitter strategies, and from a tool standpoint, if you're trying to figure out how much you share, there's two tools that I would recommend. One is called Twitalizer. And Twitalizer, and you know, do your best you can, and Google will figure out what you're trying to get to. So Twitalizer, L-Y-Z-E-R, and what they will tell you is sort of how much you're sharing versus how much is your own content, how many followers you have versus the averages, so you can kind of see how you're doing, and it'll take a snapshot of where you're at right now. There's another one called Clout, which is K-L-O-U-T, which will actually give you a generosity score. Uh, I think call it a karma score. Well, they'll let you know how generous you're being. And really, the more generous that you're being, probably the more uh, successful that you're using Twitter uh, within your overall strategy because Twitter is all about sharing really, really helpful information. It's not anything about actually you know, telling people what you're doing. Nobody cares about that. What they want is stuff that's going to help them, so we got to give – um, our customers something that's going to actually help them do their job better. What we do from a sharing standpoint is we assign employees to different groups within LinkedIn. So in this case, we've got I've got 32 groups in my area. So what we're actually we're in the process of changing the strategy right now to really make sure that we've for that with the core LinkedIn groups that we are active in that we have a representative from our company. Uh, get involved in those groups and share content and get involved at the right points when necessary. Uh, I think LinkedIn is a diamond in the rough opportunity for a lot of us uh, because most of us use it for recruiting and updating 
uh, and for very, very few tasks from a B2B standpoint, but I think we're going to start to use it more with the, in just general social networking and content sharing. Um, we big blog posts, big content-oriented blog posts where we share information from our entire network. So we have, got, as I said before, we've got these top 42 blogs, so we've sort of built this community around these really high-profile bloggers that pay attention to us because we promote all their content all the time. And every year I do this 100 uh, social media and content marketing best practices. And you'll see uh, th this uh, post that we did had 797 people retweet it. And we've had I don't know how many thousands of people we've had to this page. It's, it's probably 100,000 if I had to guess people going to just this page and checking all these predictions out. Very, very well-shared piece of content. Um, but just to talk about how it was done. So we did, th did that, which was just a blog post. And then we were also approached by uh, ZMags, who put it into a digital magazine reader for us. And here it is right there. And you'll see, if we go to the next page, you know, there's Seth Godin. I don't know how many of you have heard from of Seth Godin, but we thought it was pretty cool that the first person that actually responded to our question was Seth Godin. And so we pre present Seth Godin. We put it into a nice package. And this was very, very well received, lots of downloads, lots of people talking about us. So it really, really worked out well. And then from that, um, leveraging those relationships, we created the Content Marketing Institute, which is a collection of really, really amazingly talented people that share a bunch of content on our site. Um, we're going to get into training here in a few months, but right now we're just focusing on a blog, how-to content marketing blog a day. And here's Sarah Mitchell's blog, but we have 68 different people from around the world that are contributing content to the site, and it's all because of all the other things that we talked about that we were leveraging through social media. Uh, we focus on this consistent educational email. I know most of you uh, as publishers probably do an email newsletter uh, to your readers, but most publishers I talk to don't do a consistent email newsletter and sharing of this content to your advertisers and sponsors. I think there's an incredible opportunity for um, us to keep in touch and educate our customers, like with the idea of the book that we talked about in the beginning. You know, we want to be the expert from a marketing standpoint, so we've got to make sure that we do the, the book, the blog, and also a consistent email to those customers so that we do, we do that as well on a, on a weekly basis every Friday is our email. And number 10, which is the last point, and then, uh, David, if we wanted to take some, some questions, I don't know if we have any Q&A loaded up. Uh, but the, I think it's also important to target key associations in all this. So associations, right, but I really do believe that uh, associations are key because they're all looking for to leverage content across the board as a member benefit. And so we work with associations uh, almost exclusively for the most part is American Business Media is one, and then you'll see sharing our content here. And then we have the Custom Content Council here as well, and they share our content as well. So um, we just make sure that we try to help each other out as well, but focusing on those two key associations to share our content when the time comes as well. So I think the, the last thing, this is sort of out of place, but I wanted to bring up LinkedIn Answers and Yahoo Answers. I know a lot of publishers do not even use this or know it exists, but I think it's important to bring up um, you know, the idea is we want to be the leading expert in our niche. We've been talking about it over and over again. That means we have our customers either on a sponsor side or on a readership side that are asking questions in Yahoo Answers or LinkedIn Answers. So I think that you might want to check out the what's going on on Yahoo and LinkedIn Answers because if um, your readers and your customers are asking questions on that tool and let's say your competition or somebody else is answering it, that means they're positioning themselves as the expert and not you. So I think there's a real opportunity. I know um, if you've ever heard of John Jantz, who's public, who uh, published Duct Tape Marketing and then a new book out called The Referral Engine, he uh, made part of his living in getting that book deal and doing all those amazing things he does on ducttapemarketing.com uh, by just answering questions on Yahoo and LinkedIn Answers. So it's an opportunity there for us and, and still an underused tool. So summing up, kind of the overall, um, 
our goal is we've got to everywhere that somebody's talking about content marketing, we got to make sure we're involved, and we think that's going to help us grow our business in a lot of the same ways that we measure it. So we've grown startups to six employees with a minimal budget, uh, just by doing some of these things that we're talking about. And most of these things just take time to do. And the way we need to do is set up processes to make sure and education to make sure that we're doing the right things. So we're accomplishing our goals. Uh, mentions and links and conversions and all those things. So we're doing that, but I think it's the unexpected that is uh, most powerful where we've created some amazing relationships with people we would have never expected. We're actually getting into new business lines and products because of the relationships we've made using social media. We've gotten ideas for new products through social media that we would have never thought of on our own. So, so just some amazing things, and that's what kind of blows me away with, uh, with social media involvement. I um, just wanted to mention Content Marketing Institute. Uh, we talked about that research. So if you're looking for more um, research on content marketing and how your customers are using content marketing uh, as part of their own businesses, uh, make sure you go to contentmarketinginstitute.com and sign up. We'll make sure we get you that uh, research. So that's it uh, for the presentation, all my contact information. So if we don't get to a question or you think about it later and you have um, a question or want some more information, you can email me at joe at jumpto42.com. Uh, there's the phone number, and then you can connect with me on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, or on Twitter at Jump to Joe. Okay. I did have some questions come in. Um, <clears throat> can you talk more about content sharing with other sites? Uh, a couple questions follow on that. How should you approach other sites? Should content be basically copied and pasted, or should the content be introduced and linked back to the publishing site? Um, I'll do the first question again, and if you need me to read the second one, let me know. Okay, that's very good. Yeah, go, so, so the, How should you approach the other sites in regards to content sharing? I, I mean, there's lots of different types of content sharing, and we'll see if we can go through a couple of them. So the, the first thing is if you're just sharing somebody else's information via Twitter, you can do exactly what we talked about. Just make sure you call them out and use it on Twitter. If you're going to use it on your own sites, I mean, you can use quotes and you can use links and call outs and you don't have to get permission to do that. Everybody loves that. They want to link back. If you're linking to somebody talking about them, that's fantastic. So that's kind of sharing that type of content. If you're copying big chunks of information, that's a big no-no. So you definitely don't want to copy big chunks of information and put them put it on your site. Actually, there's a couple tools out there. I don't know them off the top of my head. But there's a couple tools out there that people can track what information has been copied off your site, and you can actually see it happen. So when you do a copy-paste, you can actually track who's copying and pasting content off of your site. So we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to share the right type of content, link back from our blogs or our articles. That's fantastic to do all the time. But I think it's the other type of content that most publishers don't engage in, and that's making sure you have editors or some other people that are commenting on key bloggers, key influencers' site, other places that your customers are hanging out at. I mean, if you're the expert, you can make sure that if there's something interesting going on on somebody else's blog, you should have somebody making a comment on that and giving your position, uh, just like you would do in a television interview or something like that. It's the same thing. So if your customers are hanging out there, you want to make sure that you definitely give your inputs and uh, and specifically on those blogs. Did I did I answer that question, David? David, you there? I'm sorry. Um, oh, yeah, I, I believe it. Uh, did you tell like how to approach them exactly? Oh, like I, I mean, I'm really sure about the question before. Yeah standpoint you can share their content without you don't need their permission Just sharing a link back uh, okay quoting them or anything like that now if you want to share their blog post or something you yeah i mean i would say do there'd things. be like a trading deal though no, yeah. I don't think, it, it depends on what your goal is like if you just okay. want some if you think it's a really good piece of information and you okay. wanted to you wanted to repurpose it on your site what i would probably do is say hey we would like to um, you know, repurpose a little bit of this content for, for you based on, you know, I guess would you want to repurpose this article on our site and do a guest post, ask them first. That would be great. Most people say yes if they have the time to do it. Most people will let you repurpose a blog directly, but you're not getting a lot of search engine traction because Google doesn't index duplicate posts. So getting any search engine benefit off of that. So I would say there's if you're going to, to build relationships, the first thing you want to do is make sure you, they know that you're sharing their content.
through Twitter and linking and those types of things so that you're not just coming out of them from the blue and saying, hey, would you do a guest post for us or something like that. Actually share their content first so that when you come to them, they already know you, they already like you, you're already sharing their content. So they're probably willing to do just about anything from a content standpoint to help you out after that fact. Okay. That sounds great. So it's a little bit more, yeah, it's pretty lenient as far as being able to, okay. Um, white papers, how often do these need to be published? This depends on your goal. Um, I would say if you're going to do a white paper series, I always like uh, quarterly or less, um, or I guess quarter or more would be a better way to say it. So either monthly or every two months or every four months would be really good if you're going to do a white paper series on something like that. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason, though, around it, depending on what your goals are. So if you're just doing a white paper for open sharing or for lead generation, you just want to make sure you keep the content fresh. And I would say look at it at least from a quarterly standpoint, because once it gets past the quarter, um, let's say six months, it might be some dated content and at least needs to be updated. More questions. Uh, you talked uh, about a lot of great ideas. Can you offer a suggestion on the best place to begin? Should I start tweeting first, then add a blog, then white pages, etc.? Oh, that's an awesome question. The first place to begin is just to listen. Um, make sure you use tools like Google Blog Search, Google Alerts. Get your hit list of key blogs that you want to start interacting with that you feel your customers are hanging out at and start actively reading, sign up for their RSS, and start actively having somebody comment if necessary. Um, I think that from that standpoint, I would say if you're going to do t tweeting and Facebook and all that stuff, you need ultimately you're going to need some place for them to go. So you have to have content on your site somewhere, either a resource section, article directory, or the blog. Um, I, I, I mean, a blog is just a tool, just like anything else. I don't want to overstate the fact that a blog is more than it is. But it's a really good way um, to share content on a consistent basis, and people love to share blogs within their own social media. So if you go and then get into, do a blog first and then get into Twitter and then get into Facebook, ultimately you can link them back to your blog, and that sort of becomes the magnet for you, so the center of your social media strategy, and this is for actually most companies, most brands and publishers, the center of their social media strategy uh, online becomes that blog. So I would say first, look at the listening campaign, and second, if you're, I mean, depends on what your goal is, but let's say your goal is to, you know, more, um, more better relationships with your customers in some way, uh, for, you know, customer retention or lead generation or whatever, you might say, well, I might want to look at blogging, uh, let's say, two times a week or maybe you start off with one time a week and then go to two. But we've seen some research from HubSpot. I think I shared this last time, David, where the um, HubSpot did some research with 2,500 small businesses and found that everybody that they contact, every business they contacted that blogged more than once per day, so it's multiple times a day, every one of them got direct business from that blog. Hmm. They, those that blogged just one day, 90%. Those that blogged every other day, 67%. So the whole thing is the more you blog, the more business you get. So I'm, I, I think uh, a blog is probably the most important tool of all, but it's the most overlooked because I think cause it's the oldest. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's see. One more question. Can you um, take case studies just a bit more, just examples of how these are used? Oh, there's all kinds of reasons for case studies. So, I mean, you might have a case study because you or an, an enhanced testimonial so that somebody can use your product or service. Or let's say that, you know, if you're a publisher and you wanted to do a case study because they somebody did a six-time program and got X amount of business or did something with them. I mean, that's just the case so that somebody at that last minute can make that decision. Then there's the case studies that you want to do that highlight your customers and the highlighting of your customers in that you want to create a better relationship with them. So maybe it's it's a relationship goal of some kind. So I think it really is depending on the goal that you want. Uh, one thing that I'm really liking about a lot, how a lot of people do testimonials and case studies now, they're actually going out to their customer base and they're using flip cams or any kind of video and they're taking video of their customers. And they're not necessarily talking about how they use the product, but they're talking about what challenges 
that they're dealing with, what some of their pain points are, and then you can use that as content for your blog site, and then you can share that with your readers and with your advertisers because that's really good content that they want to know about and then what they want to share on. So I guess it really depends on what your goal is with the case study, but there's a lot of different ways to use it. Okay. Uh, that I think that ends it. Let me see if there's any any last minute questions. Do you on your end, Joe? No, no. I think okay. I think that's it. I mean, if anybody thinks of additional questions, they can feel free to, to email me at uh, Joe at Jonathan Forty Two dot com. But I mean, I think just the overall uh, point is, I think the most important place to start was really good question is actually set up your listening post, set up your listening program. I mean, we're all you know in the journalism field. We understand how to get that type of information, and there's this a 24-7 focus group going on around our marketplace that we should be tapping into and listening to. We've got to figure out what the right tools are for us, whether that's leveraging into you know, search.twitter.com or, or leveraging TweetDeck or Hootsuite or you know, listening, uh, um, setting up Google Alerts feeds or Google Blog Search or whatever the case is so that you understand what's going on out there, where your customers are at, and then how that you can create consistent, compelling content that people are going to want to share through social media channels. All right. Well, just appreciate it again. Uh, we uh, just personally, we we learned a couple more things again today. We always do. So um, we'll we'll start applying them, and I hope everyone else does too. Uh, Joe will. Uh, our next webinar obviously is next Wednesday at noon. Uh, Joe's is, is uh, four weeks from, now, and uh, we look forward to seeing you then, Joe. Thanks again. Great. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye bye.